Today's newspaper item, over the last five years, the government has given close to 500 crores of contracts to various uh, accounting companies, popularly called as Big Five, the PricewaterhouseCoopers, KPMG, and so on and so forth. I'm just going to run through all the numbers, who got how much, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what exactly is the role these companies play in projecting India as a power, or is it beyond that, why isn't India using companies like Batley Boy and Batley Boy? This is just a name that I know of from Mumbai. It's a very famous charter accountant company. And there are many other charter accountant companies also. So why is it that the Indian government tends to pick these big five? What is exactly the secret sauce that they have that others don't seem to have? In fact, these days, many of these companies also have branches outside of India because, you know, their customers will be having branches somewhere else. So they go wherever their customers go. So here we go. Price Waterhouse Cooper over 156 crores. Deloitte and Touche over 130 crores. Ernst & Young over 88 crores. KPMG over 69 crores. And you have McKinsey over 50 crores. What exactly do these companies do? Well, one thing that, you know, they will be using whatever they are doing in India to go to some other country and say, oh, by the way, we are doing this contract for India. So there is a soft power kind of publicity that takes place, the positive buzz. Oh, India is doing this. They will not tell what exact project they are working there, but they will be able to say that, oh, if you want references, we can give you that. Indian government is working with us and we have, you know, four states that we are working in. These are all country to country negotiations. These things come quite handy. In fact, they are quite reputable, except I have also seen them do some other things and that's what I want to talk to you about. About what? My favorite company, NDTV. PricewaterhouseCoopers advised NDTV when they were getting this funny money from Universal uh, based in, uh, you know, Universal Studios. They were bringing the money in from there into NDTV. They layered it in in many ways. And I think you have read this thing already, but I'm just going to recap it very quickly. So for those of you who have not read the original article, by the way, we wrote close to a hundred articles about the malfeasance, all the corruption, all the other uh, shenanigans that NDTV did only to see that they are running away, they are getting away scot-free. Well, 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 that's how the world works. The notice, this is an excerpt from one of the first articles I um, published about NDTV. Uh, this is an income tax notice. It also shows an email trail between an auditor Vivek Mehra of Price Waterhouse Coopers and Pranoy Roy on how to conceal this income. That is, they were bringing, getting in about $150 million or somewhere in that ballpark. The emails are dated on or around the 21st of May 2008. And in that, Vivek Mehra is advising Roy on how not to mention that NDTV is receiving this asset dividend or otherwise. Because I think what he was trying to hint was that if you mention that as a dividend, then you will get taxed. Well, the IT income tax department still caught them. They'll find them. And I don't know what's going to happen of that case. The origination was Universal Studios International BV, NBC's parent, $150 million. From there, you can see how it went from there to another shell company by uh, NDTV called NDTV Networks BBI. There was another one called NDTV um, Networks in, in uh, British Virgin Islands, NDTV Networks PLC, NDTV Mauritius, H NDTV One Holdings Limited Mauritius, NDTV Studios Limited, and finally it comes to the Indian company NDTV. Here I have given it to you in, in bigger clarity. So you can, I know you, if you are reading this on, or if you are watching this on a, a smartphone, you'll be able to read this thing a little bit better. So this is the whole story of how they laundered money and brought it in. But they got away scot-free. That's all I can say. What can I say? Some people are extremely lucky because in my opinion, if they had caught this, if the Modi government had caught this, then it is my contention that of the hundreds of companies that are media TV, TV channels today in India, I, I am willing to bet 80 to 90% use the same template that was used in bringing money of politicians into television channels without the world knowing about it. That's the point. 
that you know we keep saying that you know in in tamil nadu it's so blatant that we can tell that it is all dmk run but how do you prove in a court of law that it was all dmk of money that came in right and and there's also a reason why we are saying that universal invested 150 million this is there's, there's a there's a story in a story here why did universal want to invest in ndtv oh media company media company yeah right okay if if, if a company of the caliber of pwc is looking at it ndtv by that time was already incurring losses why would they want to buy why would they want to invest 150 million it's all funny money of a politician that came in that politician made money from giving some other contract that didn't pan out so this money had been taken out because the other contract didn't pan out guys these are all stories that have been woven in many of the articles that i have written and published in pgurus.com so do you know uh, read the articles around ndtv and you'll know exactly what i'm talking about what was the bribe intended for who was the bribe intended for how did that bribe find its way into ndtv and then when the original deal for which the bribe was given fell apart this money went back yes very very interesting thanks for watching please like share and subscribe to our channel don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications namaskar